Hello world! In today's video, we look at the history or origin of 2.4 GHz ISM band and we'll also understand how Bluetooth devices operate or coexist with other devices which say use protocols like Wi-Fi, Zigbee, etc. on the same 2.4 GHz ISM band. So first of all, what is ISM? So ISM stands for Industrial, Scientific and Medical Band. Industrial application involves induction heating, plastic softening and plastic welding. Medical application includes microwave diathermy. The most commonly encountered ISM device is the microwave oven. The magnetrons in domestic microwave ovens emit microwaves at 2.45 GHz. This frequency is used as it is both effective in cooking your food and cheap to achieve. Now, despite heavy shielding, microwave ovens leak this frequency as they aren't a perfect Faraday cage. Thus, the original ISM specifications envisioned that the ISM bands would be primarily used for non-communication purposes such as heating as we just discussed. Now, in every country, there is a regulating agency which manages the usage of various spectrums. Spectrum is nothing but continuous range of frequencies. In USA, this is managed by FCC. In India, it is managed by TRI or TRAI and so on and so forth. Thus, in order to use a particular spectrum, you need to seek the permission from FCC if you are in US or TRI if you are in India. These agencies are responsible for managing and licensing the electromagnetic spectrum for users. Thus, all these unwanted and unavoidable emissions from industrial and other processes that we just discussed were provided a few megahertz of space in both the directions by the FCC. Which means that this band of 2.4 to 2.4835 gigahertz was designated for unlicensed operation. That is, you do not need a license to operate your device in this range. That's how the 2.4 to 2.4835 gigahertz was born. Now, due to increasing sophistication of microelectronics and the obvious economic attraction of unlicensed use, the 2.4 GHz ISM band was adopted by a large number of wireless devices. This is a non-ISM use of the band, as it doesn't fall under the originally envisioned industrial, scientific and medical application areas. Now, a range of devices like cordless phones, Wi-Fi routers, Bluetooth devices, and many others started using the same band. The 2.4 GHz band was ideal due to its low cost to implement, lower power needs, and longer range or decent distance capabilities. As all these devices talk on the same band, it leads to interference, which is also a major drawback of using this band. Thus, all the devices have to fend for themselves so that they can communicate with each other effectively. Wi-Fi, for example, uses DSS or Direct Sequence Spread Spectrum Transmission, where it spreads all signals over the entire ISM band. Also, the interference in case of Wi-Fi is minimized by boosting the signal strength and by writing a more intelligent firmware for the router. Now enough of Wi-Fi, let's shift our focus towards Bluetooth, which is our main topic of discussion, and see how it manages to talk on this rather overcrowded band. So Bluetooth systems use something called as frequency hopping spread spectrum. Bluetooth divides the 2.4 to 2.4835 GHz band into 79 channels, where the width of each channel is 1 MHz. The Bluetooth devices never ever stay on the same channel. An actively communicating Bluetooth device changes channel every 1,600 times per second. So this hopping around business is performed in a fairly random order, so that no particular channel is used much more than any other channel. Now, of course, two Bluetooth devices that are supposed to communicate with each other should follow the same hopping sequence. And this is agreed upon before the data transfer. And due to this, they are always transmitting and receiving using the same sequence, or they are always on the same page. This hopping around makes Bluetooth more robust to interferences from nearby sources of evil radio waves, 
and allows Bluetooth networks to coexist in the same place. Versions like 1.2 and greater reduce the effect of presence of any other network by using something called as adaptive frequency hopping method, which is even better. So the AFH identifies the channels where interferences are present and marks these channels as bad channels. Then the sequence of hops is modified such that the frequency channels with high level interference are avoided. The bad channels in this frequency hopping pattern are replaced with good channels via a lookup table. The Bluetooth master may periodically listen on a bad channel. If the interference has disappeared, then that channel is marked as a good channel. Bluetooth slaves can also send reports regarding the channel quality to the master if required. Now, the AFH method not only improves the performance of the Bluetooth network itself, but it also reduces the effect of the Bluetooth network on other nearby networks that aren't Bluetooth compliant. So to conclude, every type of device, be it BLE-based or Wi-Fi-based or Zigbee-based, has to use different ways to minimize the impact of interference on this very overcrowded 2.4 GHz ISM band. So that's it for today. Hit the like button and share the video if you found it useful. And obviously, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time with more content related to Bluetooth and other wireless tech and embedded systems in general. And as of for now, bye world.